Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everybody. This is Chris, and I'd like to invite you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, I apologize for the last uh, two conversations that we've had with with my te- technical difficulties. Uh, this time we're trying something a little different. We're using Skype to call in to the studio. So I, so far so good. It would it would seem. Um, so I would like to go out and 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 and, and begin. Uh, today we're also going to try and do the uh, the uh, the talk that we had planned last week about satsang, kundalini satsang. And so we're going to go ahead and give that a another try. I would like to thank Amelia Santara uh, and her family in the Kingdom of Kerry in Ireland uh, for sponsoring this program. Uh, I would like to thank all of you who are listening live and who are listening to this uh, recording on the archives. Most of you uh, see this on the archives, and so I'd like to extend a warm hello to all of you who are reading this on the archives. I'd like to thank Eileen Loro and Glenn Ola and all of the people that have come together to help to help me bring this information out to you. So thank you everyone for doing that. Uh, other areas of, uh, of, uh, of understanding this information can be found at the website www. Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com and that's the number one. And then you can also go to uh Chrisum dot Kundalini at YouTube and you can watch the videos if you wish. You can also go to Kundalini Awakening Seminars dot com. Uh you can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups dot com. You can also go to Facebook, and there's a couple of groups, or two or three groups on Facebook. One is called Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation point. The other one is called Kundalini Awakening Systems 1. And another one is called uh, a Kundalini Ashram. So all of those can be found on the group section in Facebook. Also, my page uh, on Facebook is, you know, Chris and Kundalini, and so... Uh, as as we continue into this conversation, I just want to to once again uh, show my gratitude for everyone who does tune in and listen, and for those who who assist in bringing this information out to to the populations. Uh, satsang is uh, is kind of a word, as I mentioned last week, that that means sitting in truth or or in the presence of truth and it typically involves a teacher and in uh that that is the role that that I've been given to play this time around we've all been teachers we've all been students and so uh you know nobody is raised higher than anybody else uh certainly not within a kundalini context uh parity and equanimity and balance are are often the uh the areas that are really expressed well, and if and if the expression isn't coming to you, it's only because there are are levels of balance that need to be attained. And so, uh, you know, within that understanding, you you strive to live a good life. You practice the safeties. You're forgiving. You're tolerant. You're you're gracious. You you practice service and and love without you know waiting to be you know, paid back in kind. And uh, you practice, you practice and practice, and yet you're not feeling any of the special qualities that come with the Kundalini Awakening, even though, even though you may have already had a lot of uh, of the uh, phenomena occurring. And basically what, what what is being, what your attention is being brought to is the level of balance that you are currently at within your Within your process, where is your balance? Are you are you are you still holding grudges? Are you still uh, um, looking at the opposite sex in a in a shall we say a destructive uh, you know lust slash destruction way? Uh, a way you know this is 
fomented in our society. I'm not going to blame everybody uh, who has those thoughts. Uh, this society perpetuates those thoughts. And so I wouldn't be surprised if everybody was having those thoughts to some degree, certainly not putting a judgment on it. Uh, where are your imbalances in your life? You know who you haven't forgiven. You know this person or these people. So, you know, you you know that you can always start with forgiveness no matter where you are in your process. Uh, if, you, if you're not receiving enough, of what you feel the kundalini should give to you, well, th- we can have a little discussion about your expectations because of that. But if the, if if you're given from your kundalini that, ah, oh, well, we still have some balancing work to do, then I will strongly suggest that you get right into your work and, and do your forgiveness and become that tolerant person. Purposefully inject yourself into a social situation where you know you're going to have to be tolerant. And go into it knowing that you're putting yourself into it to test yourself. Families, real good for this. You know, get it. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we're in August now. And so, uh, you know, autumn is fast approaching. And in the autumn months, uh, uh, coming into the winter months, you know, we have a few social holidays that are perfect for this type of a test, uh, for you to give yourself. You know, you put yourself in a situation with your family or with friends or wherever, and put yourself in a situation where you know you're going to need to be tolerant. And you can just give that to yourself as a gift of tolerant practice. Or, you know, conversely, you can you can inject yourself into a situation where you're giving, you know, loving service to another person without asking their name, without shaking a hand. You're just doing something kind for for them, preferably a stranger. Although, you know, don't put yourself in, you know, in danger, you know, uh, going to a homeless camp or something like that, handing out $100 bills. Uh, you know, it could go, it could get wild. So, you know, be discerning with how you give your service, but don't be afraid to give your service. And don't have any expectations of anything being given to you because you're doing this service. The service really is more for your own uh, inner kundalini balance. Now, I need to uh, talk to Santara here. Santara, are you there? Try this new modality here. Hi, Chris, yes. I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. Am I coming through okay, or are I just talking to the air? (laughs) No, to me, you're coming through fine. Very good. It was one or two little words, but only a couple of words. But maybe we could ask people who are listening on their PCs or by, you know, if there's a difficulty that's ongoing with the sound quality or with clarity, maybe they bring the studio and let us know. That would be appreciated. Yeah, give them, give them, give them the call numbers, Amelia. Yep, and the call number is three four seven. Nine three four zero two six. That's uh, a USA number. Three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And you get on to me and then um, let me know. And if you have a question for Chrism or if you have a comment, and it can be about any aspect of the Kundalini awakening process, and you'd like to speak with Chrism, well then please give me a ring and I will put you through to him. And maybe I could take this opportunity, Prism, again, just to give out the place that a person can go to if they would like to make a donate. And that is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, you will see the donate button. And it's very easy to use indeed. And alternatively, if you wanted to um, donate directly into Prism's bank, you can email me, and I will give you those details. And my email address is kundaliniMatters at gmail.com. So please do ring in if, if the sound or the quality or clarity of Chrism's speaking um, needs attention. Very appreciated. Okay, Chrism, well, you're sounding great so, <laughs> so far. Thank so you. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Santara. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for your patience with that. We just wanted to make sure it was going out to you. 
So yeah, so so as you as you are being gifted or not gifted with specific phenomena, and I know everybody wants the phenomena, and the phenomena is useful because it does kind of give you a uh, a sign and a, uh, and a and an idea of where you are at within the process, but it's not necessary for you to know because I mean you already know where you're at in the in the process. You're you know, if you're if you're you know past the kriyas, or you're just starting the entities, or you're you know you're past the entities, you're just starting the kriyas. You know, there are different areas that that will appear, and, and some of these areas are just extremely obvious. Well, okay, I'm seeing entities all over the place, so I must be in the entity phase, or you know, I can't stop from going into what looks like a seizure to everybody else, but what feels pretty good to me. I must therefore be in the Kriya stage. And don't think the stages can't overlap because they can. They can. And so, if you know, if you're not feeling uh, phenomena, once again, I mentioned uh, it's, a, it's a real opportunity for you to go within and to see where your process needs to be balanced or needs to be tweaked or needs to have some sort of an expectation taken out of the equation of your, your kundalini equation. So kundalini is basically saying, well, you expect to have phenomena, and that's kind of like demanding to have phenomena of a source that, uh, you know, is basically trying to take your fixation of attachment away. And so if you have a lot of attachment to having phenomena, that attachment alone uh, can can be the blockage that you need to work with. Okay, and so, but I understand the the uh, the the need to have a a level of clear and uh, you know clear and present sign and symptom of Kundalini, and if it goes away after having been there, you know, quite active for a while, then you'll think that it's missing or that something's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Uh, everybody's going to, to require a a quiet time, which I call a plateau, a plateau event. And what this plateau event does is give people time to process what it is they've already been receiving and they've been receiving, you know, such uh, phenomena with. So it's a time to refine your processing, okay? Um, I'm going to hesitate here, and I'm going to go into that uh, studio. Yeah, feel free to call in at 347-934-0026. That's uh, 347-934-0026. Um, so yeah, as we as we continue, and you know, we explore the area of phenomena itself. I did mention that the phenomena will overlap, and it will most certainly overlap. And so you can indeed have multiple interactions at the same time, like like I did. You know, when early in my process, I had the entities, and I had the kriyas, and I had the visions, and I had you know the cracking in the spine and the and the crunching in the neck and you know the uh, the movement of what i considered to be energy eggs up the spine and these were like balls of energy that had a very 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 tactile uh expression uh you literally felt an object moving up the center of your spine going up and then coming down a little bit, and then going up a little further, and then coming back down, or just coming up and staying in a certain area. Uh, this is all part of the process with the Kundalini. It's stopping at certain areas. It's uh, it has its own agenda of of karmic refinement for you. So l let me let me get into that a little bit. Everybody is special within the Kundalini because you have your own personal karmic agenda within the kundalini and the karmic agenda is what actions and deeds and thoughts and, and experiences have you had 
in other existences that are lending themselves towards this experience that you're having right now. Uh, many people in their in their you know directly behind uh, this Kundalini event that they're having right now. Many people were monks or priests or priestesses or you know uh, people that were very very focused nuns on on a, on, a, on a spiritual quest. You know they they were here as a gift to God, uh, and and this is you know. This is what their understanding was given for them to be. With their, here is a gift to God. Therefore, I will I will dedicate my life to God. And and this may have been uh, a, a person's pre-life uh, Kundalini preparation. Uh, and you would have had more than one of these lives. You'd have had you know quite a succession. Uh, human beings don't evolve that quickly. Sometimes they do. <coughs> Sometimes they do, but they have to be at a certain uh, level of preparation to make big evolutionary jumps uh, within a spiritual context. Uh, Kundalini is indeed that big evolutionary jump. But once you're inside the jump, well, where are you jumping to and how are you going to land? And, you know, what, what's the whole point of, of, of this evolutionary jump and why – why did it come to me? I didn't ask for this to occur. And does it have to be so terrifying, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, inside the jump, which is where most of you who are having Kundalini are right now, because it is a lifetime event, as you're inside the jump, what you're learning to do is to surrender and to accept. When you're inside that evolutionary jump from uh, uh, Homo sapien to to homo luminosus, which is a, a term I'm borrowing from uh, from uh, what's his name? He's a he runs a shaman outfit. They do a lot of uh, uh, trips down to South America. Uh, yeah, homo luminosus, the uh, the human light being, and so this is where people are generally evolving into, and. And so, you know, you, you you live your life within the kundalini context as you have the kundalini by accepting its grace of change upon you. You don't get to control this as much as it gets to work its agenda upon you. Okay. Its agenda is obviously one of transformation and uh, the the cocoon and the butterfly are really the the easiest uh, symbol of what is occurring to the human being inside of the Kundalini awakening. Okay, and but but you know your cocoon isn't just you you know taking a snooze, you know like in inside this this hard shelled little world. You know, this isn't you being, you know, I dream of genie in a bottle, and, and there you stay. Uh, you're out in life. You're out in the environment. You're not just, uh, you know, waiting for change to happen to you. You are part of that change. You're part of that change, and, you're, and part of that responsibility is accepting the many changes that are coming your way. And with Kundalini, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a... Uh, a palette of different changes that are occurring. You know, it's it, it's very tactile. It's a very tactile experience. This is not soft and fluffy all the time. It's soft and fluffy some of the time, but it's not soft and fluffy all of the time. And because because it has a direct uh, tactile experience with the person, uh, it's stronger than. You know, you would you would associate with many of the other uh, New Age or occult experiences where, you know, you feel a little bit of a temperature change and oh, there's the entity, the entity is there, uh, or the table lifts up, or you know, some sort of psychokinetic uh, type of phenomena occurs. Uh, with the Kundalini person, this is happening to you all the time, uh, and it scares a lot of people because it is unbidden, and they don't know what's happening. It's out of their control, and, uh, you know, this, this, this initiates the fear response. And, and 
So for those of you that already have this, you don't need to be afraid. If it's called upon you, well, then it's your time to have it. If it came unbidden, well, that was the way you needed it to come. You don't get to have it all planned out just the way you have on your on your monthly planner. You know, Kundalini looks at the different things. It looks at the different karmic flavors that you're working on here in this lifetime. And if it fits that agenda or if it has to uh, give you a certain kind of phenomena-based experience, that allows you, through that experience, to mature spiritually within uh, a, a certain uh, a matrix of uh, of the Kundalini agenda. You know, another uh, another example of that would be, you know, having the Christ appear to you, which this happens to my students. Uh, the Christ or Gautama, a high personage, a high spiritual being, will appear to them and discuss certain things that need to be worked on uh, or just stand there letting the person just partake of their of their you know, enlightenment and the radiance that comes off them and and just through taking in the radiance can a whole teaching a whole level of teaching be given uh through that means and so these are very 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 real experiences this is in no way what uh you know the medical community uh, you know likes to call uh, you know, bipolarism or, you know, any of the other illnesses or, you know, uh, situations that, that, that they can't explain and therefore, you know, it must be a new, a new reason to develop another pharmaceutical med. So, so this is real. This is happening. You're not crazy. It's just that Homo sapiens aren't finished evolving. None of you who are listening to this right now are finished evolving. You're in the process. You're in the water. You're learning how to swim. With Kundalini, you're just, you know, you're in, in deep, choppy water <laughs> as opposed to the community swimming pool. But you're also not swimming in that ocean alone. You have a lot of interest. There's a lot of interest generated uh, by a person who is going through the Kundalini awakening, I'll make some uh, some bold statements here, just for people to really just get pissy and click me off. Uh, there are more uh, entities or, or, or spiritual consciousness outside of the physical expression than there are inside of the physical expression, and so. You know, we're we're going on to nine billion people, I think, on this planet, or seven, seven or eight or nine billion. Uh, that's that's a lot of people, and yet there's you know, an endless, an endless amount of of consciousness that are observing what is happening here and feeling the evolutionary waves that are coursing through the people that are having a Kundalini experience. Okay, uh, Kundalini people. Just by virtue of their of the energetic anatomy are lit up, and that means their energetic anatomy is lit up by the Kundalini and can be discerned uh you know from a spiritual level I mean a lot of spiritual consciousness will convene around a Kundalini awakening person just to learn what it is to go through this stage of human evolution, and some yeah some like to mess around with the person having it. I mean, you know, the whole entity stage is about controlling your fear of of uh, not having control mechanisms the way you're used to having control mechanisms. You have to you have to look into changing the way you respond to that which is unknown. Okay, but it's a big deal. That's a big change and it doesn't come easy for people. Because you're fighting, uh, uh, you know, the, the natural impulse to go into terror with something that that uh, that is unknown. But that is what I'm suggesting that you do, and I'm also suggesting that you place such a high degree of trust in the Kundalini within you that has led you to listen to this talk. You trust that source with your life, literally, with the with your life, the life of your kids, the life of your of your spouse, 
I mean, you really, really, really want to get down and trust this force. And you'll know, you'll know that, you know, when you're crying at the drop of a hat because, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, an old man helped a young child across the road, that, that act of love, you know, brings you to tears. You know you're inside of the Kundalini, so you know that, you know, based upon your phenomena that, that you qualify as someone going through the Kundalini Awakening experience, and therefore you begin to accept and surrender your expectations and your levels of implied control over your life. Everything that is happening to you is happening because you have the Kundalini, not because you did anything special. I mean, you did. You did. You had to live your karma, but... Uh, you know, you reach a point where you're beyond the corporeal understanding of what choice is. You go beyond choice. You go beyond conscious choice in this body. A lot of folk, you know, who have the Kundalini come to them without reaching for it, you know, harbor a lot of resentment at the Kundalini for coming to them and disrupting their lives and making life a lot more uh, interesting, uh, but also making life a lot more difficult in some ways than what they were experiencing before. They, you know, they have somewhat of a hard time uh, with this whole idea of giving up the control of your life or the agenda of your life to the Kundalini. And I, you know, I get it, I understand it, but it's a new world that has come to you. Whether or not you came to it, it has come to you. And, you know, it's not something that just goes away. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a, you know, a three-year-old telling, telling her parents that she doesn't like the new teeth that are coming in. Get rid of them. She didn't ask for those teeth to come in, and it hurts. Okay, so it's a, you know, that's a very similar agenda or scenario. Uh, that the Kundalini has with our ego selves as we go, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, I like uh, uh, eating this, or I like doing this or that activity, when the Kundalini is clearly telling you, don't eat that, don't do that activity. You know, from from uh, from too much yoga to too much prayer to too much meditation, Kundalini is going to stop you in your tracks at certain areas. Okay, and so... You have to surrender and, and accept the agenda of the divine force within you. <clears throat> the divine force within. This goes way beyond uh, simple corporeal uh, uh, implied choices or decision making. Okay, you made the choice to have a body that would have the kundalini at the time that you've had it in this lifetime. You don't get accidental kundalini. I don't care if you had a ski accident and hit a tree. Well, you had to get up at the precise moment uh, of the morning of that day to do everything that you had to do in order to run into that tree on the ski slope. So once again, decisions were made uh, and experiences were given based upon those decisions. Therefore, you know, you, you, you crashed into that tree and the lower sp spine was, was damaged and whoop, there goes the kundalini. Well, it's not accidental. Same with those of you who awaken the kundalini uh, giving birth or in a car accident or, you know, getting thrown from a horse or ice skating and falling on that tailbone. Ouch. And they're done that, not the ice skating so much, but falling on the tailbone. Uh, you know, a lot of these things, you know, they, <laughs> they're they not accidental. And, you know, because we accompany, you know, sometimes uh, an activation trauma is given to a person uh, because of a certain level of karmic uh, uh, um, a development that they're going through at that time. Just because the activation is accompanied with pain doesn't take away the validity of the activation. It's as valid an activation as if you were Ramakrishna, you know, walking in, in ecstasy across the room. Ramakrishna is an, an Indian uh, saint who had Kundalini and uh, 
he would walk around his students in in uh, in in uh, ecstasy. Was not something that I'm so good at. I usually just freeze right up and heave a lot and cry a lot, and the ecstasy <laughs> eventually passes. You know, if I'm lucky. Um, so if there's anybody out that would like to call in, uh, Santara is manning the studio. I'm not going to touch anything in the studio here, but the call-in number is uh, 1 and then 347-934-0026. Uh, so that's one three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Call me and ask me a question about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, so continuing with the sat thing here. Some of you have been specifically picked to do a certain thing uh, within the Kundalini agenda. Some of you uh, may have started out as just regular you know, married folk, and all of a sudden the Kundalini comes, and then all of a sudden... You find yourself in a whirlwind of activity and and uh, social social media, social presentation. I mean, all of a sudden you're kicked up into this whirlwind of activity, and your face is being plastered all over the papers. Well, this is as the Kundalini wants it to be for you. Kundalini will bring people to hear you, to see you, to touch you to ask you a question, to receive an answer. Uh, if the, you know, for those of you that are being pulled into politics, well, that, you know, the only reason we have such a real negative view of politicians in our current uh, experience of politicians is because the corruption rates are so high with them. But for Kundalini people, they don't have that option of corruption because the inner, the inner being that the Kundalini is uh, will often preclude that. They won't. Al- it won't be allowed to happen. Uh, Centara, am, am I still coming through? I just heard a, a strange sound. I'll wait for you to respond. There you are. Hi, Prism. I'm sorry. My um, unmute button is very slow today for some reason. Yes, you're coming through very clearly to me. Nobody okay, has very in, good. so let's assume that's the case. Um, I actually have a question, if I could ask it. It was asked sure. today on, on the, uh, the group. Um, somebody wrote in, it's about entities. Somebody wrote in that, um, and, I'm, and I'm quoting it now, still focused on the entity and our vision. It's one of the major challenges of my life. Are there tools or techniques to facilitate this? And, I, and it was interesting the, the, because being focused on the entity is the way it was phrased. Yeah, well, that's probably why you're having so much entity contact is you're focusing so much on it. But I understand. I understand. When the entities first start coming, you can't just go, oh, you know, that paranormal thing just happened and I'll, now I'll just ignore it. You know, a head comes out of a wall or something flies by you. Uh The, the idea behind the entities is not for you to join up with them and become a little, you know, assistant entity. Um, the idea is for you to claim your seniority over your body and your spiritual expression without having that body and spiritual expression trespassed upon by a discarnate spiritual entity. So that means a a spiritual consciousness without a body. That's what discarnate means, without meat, without a body. And so, yeah, you have the entity experience uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, Some of the reasons are to, one, get rid of your fear of the unknown, Uh, get rid of that deadly, deadly toxic fear of the dead, the dead, the ghost, or the, the, uh, yeah, the, I mean, anything that's spiritual, of a spiritual quality and without a body, typically uh, will bring out a severe fear response in a person. It, you know, it's like a dread. 
and the, the skin goes, goes cold and clammy and the hair's up on the back of the neck, the whole bit, the whole nine yards. And, and uh, this is just a conditioned response. It's conditioned. It's it's okay. You don't. You'll have that. You'll experience that. Then you'll get. You have. You know. If you're lucky enough to have a lot of entities, well, then you'll start losing your fear of them. Uh, many of the entities are programmed here to scare you. The idea, their job is to scare you. Their job is to infiltrate your mind, your dreams, and your Kundalini communication in order to terrify you, in order to to cause you decisions that make your life very, very difficult. This, too, aids in the spiritual evolution of your body. Uh, nobody ever said Kundalini was going to be soft and fluffy, you know, like a teddy bear floating over, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, the elves of Christmas coming to your rescue. I mean, uh, Kundalini is not like that, and one of the one of the reasons, or I say that, is because sometimes you're allowed to be terrified. I was allowed to be terrified for a long time uh, until I discovered that it was me who was allowing myself to be terrified, and that I had actual choice within that whole idea of being terrified. And I just decided at one point that I was no longer terrified, and. And that moved me into this whole other level of of uh, of karma. And so, uh, yeah, you will be terrified by these entities, typically. They know how to cherry pick your deepest, darkest fears and then bring that deep, dark fear right up into your face in the daytime, waking state, and you're wondering, what the heck just happened? Did I really see a... Uh, you know, a giant spider coming towards me or a giant snake wanting to eat me or a, a black dog with red eyes lunging at me or a wolf following me or, a, you know, uh, you know, any of a number of the uh, of the Kundalini creatures that are that are, you know, top of their of their uh, pyramid, their 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 hunting pyramid. So, yeah, yeah, you'll you need to be afraid sometimes. Because you can't get over fear without knowing fear. You can't get over fear without knowing fear. You don't get to walk around it. You have to walk through it. And the lesson will just keep repeating itself over and over. Okay, Kristen, wow, he failed that one miserably. Let's see what he does with this one here. We'll we'll tweak the equation a little bit, see if we can get a little more evolution out of that guy. Let's see. Oh my god, he failed again. So <laughs> the uh the lessons will be repeated ad nauseum until you get it right. Until you get it right. And one of the things that I want you to really be aware of right now is your acceptance of kundalini coming to you, not only from the base of your spine or the top of your head, but also from an outside vector that is harmonizing with your kundalini, that is adding to your kundalini. And what what is it? that you could possibly have that would add to another person's kundalini. What would that be? Your own kundalini is what that would be. So as you hear my voice, as you listen to my words, which, you know, I don't have a script here. This is kundalini coming straight through me, my voice, through the air, into this computer, and out to you, and into your eardrum, and into your spine, into your brain, into your energetic anatomy. This isn't coming at you. This is coming in you. And I want you to welcome it. I really want you to, to do, you know, turn it around for yourself. 
Kundalini loves you. Kundalini wants to help you evolve, and, and it will do that. It will do that. And as soon as you start accepting and, and loving what is happening with you from your own Kundalini, the sooner you'll start consciously evolving with the Kundalini, taking your evolution notes from the divine force within rather than, you know, from a 2,000-year-old book that everybody seems to have wanted to put their own interpretation upon. You start taking your life cues from the organic source of the force within you, that wild source, that natural source that is your birthright. It's every human's birthright. Everybody that has a spine has kundalini down there at the base of it, waiting, waiting, waiting throughout the lifetime so that it can finally reach into that divine sun and open up that person to that inner light, that inner and outer light at the same time. Okay. Now, I know a lot of you uh, will download this program and listen to it while you're driving, and I, and I really I think that's a great way to listen to these conversations. I really do. Um, but I do want you to keep yourself as focused as you possibly can on the road. Pay attention to your driving. Seriously. Pay attention to your driving. And, and you know, take these lessons and internalize these lessons. You know, you're going to pay five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 for, for information of this quality, uh, you know, at a, at a resort type of thing. You know, um, here, I'm, I'm just giving it to you, and, and I want you to really begin to internalize this. Practice the safety. Practice the safety protocols. You could reach those protocols by going to www.kundaliniawakeningsystems1, the number one, dot com. That's all one word, kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com. Go to the... Uh, to the, the contents on the left-hand margin, and you'll see safeties. Click on that safeties, and then hard copy all of that. That begins to teach you how to live a kundalini life. A kundalini life. And like it or not, folks, like it or not, accept it or not, you have kundalini now. Or you want the kundalini now. Start living a kundalini life. And that kundalini expression that you currently have going underway will will really improve. If you're having a difficult time with it, it will definitely improve. And for those of, the, you, of you that are searching for the kundalini, well, your chance is coming up much faster if you're living the safety protocols uh, of, of kundalini awakening. Do all of the safeties, not just cherry picking through them. Oh, I like this one. Oh, I don't like this one. Oh, I like that one. Oh, I don't like this one. I want you to do all of the safeties, whether or not you like them. It's your entire evolution that is being worked on, not just certain areas, even though certain areas are also being worked on. Uh, There's a special combination to you. That combination is only known by your kundalini. And it gives you specific phenomena that allows you to work through the karma that you have left, your residual karma, and allows you, as you work that karma, to come into a greater luminosity within the kundalini, a greater expression of light within the, within the kundalini, a greater expression of love, of divine love, within your kundalini expression. Now, I know that you're going to go online and you're going to compare your kundalini with other people's kundalini and, oh, they have that. Why don't I have that? Oh, I have this. Why don't they have that? And you're going to make all these comparisons. And and that's fine. Go right ahead. Have fun. Knock yourself out. Uh, but your 
experience is not going to be the same as other people's experience. There will be familiar areas. But we're all unique, and we all have the unique karma, and within that context, everybody is is unique within the expression of their kundalini awakening. If you have a question about your kundalini awakening experience, the number to call in is one three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. So one three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Uh, you know, since we are taking, you know, this is this is a, kind of like an overview type of a of a of a conversation. Many many things can happen though. The knocking on the walls, the the visions, the tall dark people hovering over you, the the beautiful. Uh, uh, enlightened being coming to visit you, uh, you know the the animals loving you, the babies wanting to be next to you or calming down around you, people just wanting to touch you, or uh, your telepathy, you know the broadband telepathy, the narrowband telepathy, you know so many symptoms can happen to a person at the same time that you'll literally be questioning your sanity and then all of a sudden it all goes away. Just as you learn to cope, it all goes away. Where, gosh, what did I do to make the Kundalini angry that it stopped doing all these things? Well, that's a plateau time. That's that's when you come uh, to uh, to process. The, the the different energetic changes and transformations that have occurred. Now, part of the processing, of course, is experiencing it, and and but that's not all of it. You see, with a physical kriya, a physical kriya can have its its emotional kriya counterpart. So let's just say a physical kriya. You know, you go into a certain yoga position. Well, that yoga position has a complementary kriya of the emotional body that will come right along with it. And then there will be a, another complementary kriya of a, of the mental body and then the you know the spiritual body, the the uh the psycho- psychological body. These all have uh, a a whole palette of of uh signs and symptoms direct physical phenomena that the kundalini will bring often at the same time. Sometimes it's one at a time, but most of the time with the Kundalini, you're going to get a series of phenomena associated with a series of the 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 uh, five bodies of human expression: physical, mental, emotional, psychological, psychological, and spiritual. Okay, and then you add to that the application of certain phenomena within a certain chakra, you know, you'll, you may have phenomena of a survival level at your first chakra, you know, and you're mixing that with phenomena of a creativity. Uh, let's unlock more creativity in the second chakra. And, and you know, as, as, we're, as we're struggling in survival and yet we're unlocking our creativity, we're pulling energy from the cosmos in, in our in our our uh our connection to the physical universe with the third chakra you know remember the the third chakra is at the solar plexus the solar plexus the plexi of the solar system on the human body which would be the third chakra you know and, and so you know each of the chakras begins to express a, a a kriya in a unique fashion and yet at the same time and so you know you'll have that kriya and you'll all of a sudden burst into tears you'll begin to to cogitate a, a very advanced mathematical formula that you've never studied you know and, and and you know later on you might start speaking French or writing poetry in French another language that you've never uh, studied the, this stuff really happens this is you know, I'm, I'm not kidding here, although it does sound like I'm kidding. Uh, Gopi Krishna had this happen to him. He's a, 
a guy from the 1930s, and, uh, you know, he had the Kundalini come up, and, you know, he started writing and speaking in languages that he'd never studied. <coughs> and the saints and the and the mages down the line that have had the Kundalini, you know, this is all, this is all known to them. They, you know, Kundalini is not a mystery to those guys and gals. So yeah, so don't expect it to be linear. Don't expect that you know. Therefore, well, I have a Kundalini kriya in my calf. Therefore. Uh, I should have entity, spontaneous entity engagement that has to do with my calf, but has to do with holding up the body, uh, grounding the body, and all of these types of things. And don't try to make a linear formula out of it. Just accept it in the nonlinear way that it's being offered. What you're being given here is you're being given a language to study. And I think I've done a, I think I've done a conversation on. Uh, the language of Kundalini. Santara, have I done that conversation? The language of Kundalini? Yes, Chris, and you've done um, dream language. Oh, I but not just the, yeah. not just the, the Kundalini? Um, no, I think dream, oh. maybe you have, okay. Well, let me touch on no, it a I little bit here. No, I think dream language. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I will do that. Uh, Kundalini comes at you with a very specific language, and it's not a language of words. Although, although sometimes words are used, Kundalini comes at you in, in, in different vectors of language, the language of mathematics. Kundalini will come to you in a language of mathematics that, that has a lot to do with threes. Three, six, and nine, and all permutations of those numbers uh, going into the negative or the positive range, that is a mathematical language that is based on the Trinity, which is also based on the Kundalini, which is, you know, one of the one of the ways to express this equation, this mathematic equation, are the two that are one and the one that is two, either of which equals Three. So some of you will, will be able to follow that. Some of you will question your Kundalini, and your Kundalini will give you that answer. Um, so it will come with you in that level of language. It will also come with you. Uh, it will send certain animals to you, certain animals to you that that are expressing just by their presence a concept that the Kundalini wants you to, to understand. Uh, a concept that it's communicating to you through that snake or that wasp or that cat or that bird or that fish or that flower, you know, whatever it is. Often in the dream life, in the dream life is where you get a lot of this language thrown at you, okay? So take it all in, my friends. Take it all in. It is a huge, beautiful, big aquarium. And you're right down there, you know, you're, well, you're not actually down there. You're kind of floating on the top, which is, you know, not always the best place to swim in the ocean. But it is where we have to swim in the ocean because, you know, we're dual beings, you know. So open yourself to these new concepts. Open yourself to the new language. Uh, the language will come in phenomena. It will come in uh Repetitions of numbers, certain colors. You're seeing a certain color all the time. Uh, a certain kind of, of of man or woman may start coming to you repeatedly. Uh, and, and these will often be representations of sacred male and sacred female in your life. Uh, you know, you'll do something good and all of a sudden you'll see a, a, a wise old man walk past you and just, Look at you straight in the eye, nod his head, and move on. And you know you've just been communicated with from your kundalini. Uh, same with, a, with, with the, you know, the gender doesn't matter, uh, except as it differentiates between sacred, sacred male and sacred female. Uh, 
But you are being observed by these forces, by the sacred forces that uh, the Kundalini is representative of. You are being observed. You are being watched. You are being guided. Trust the Kundalini. And for those of you that want to go a step further with it, I'm going to suggest that you trust the information source that your Kundalini has led you to. The information source that your Kundalini has led you to. For some people, that's me, Krisam. For others, it would be, you know, Muktananda or Sri Rajneesh, uh, calls himself Osho now, okay? Uh, you know, there people, you know, people are called to, to different areas, you know, for different reasons. And so, uh, for, for this area, for you, if you feel that what I'm telling you is, is even close to the truth, then I want you to really start taking my suggestions to you seriously. I want you to strip yourself naked of all preconceptions about what you have read on the web about what Kundalini is. Most of the people that write on the web about Kundalini do not have it. They're just describing what they read in a book or what the sacred pages in their sacred manual says is true or false. You know, people that want to have something that differentiates them from the rest of the group, you know, and, and the, no matter what, they'll try hard to get whatever it is that they want to have, and, and they may even fabricate that. Okay. You pay attention to, to what the Kundalini is telling you. Uh, and you know those of you who have the Kundalini, you know it's not, you know it's not a, a cotton candy carnival ride that you can get off of. It's there all the time. You are that ride. <laughs> you are the fairway. You're the merry-go-round, and you're the horses on that merry-go-round. Okay. Go ahead and uh, if you have a question, uh, call. One three four seven nine three four zero zero two six, and I'd like to welcome the uh, the the two people that I have listening. Hello, listeners. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Uh, if people do have a question about their process, feel free to call in at the numbers that I've given. Uh, with regards to uh, phenomena. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get myself in trouble here and go, go into a certain area of phenomena because I'm being given that right now to do. Just got to word it right. Uh, the libido. The libido can get you in trouble in our society. Okay, The kundalini will arouse the libido to such a strong, strong, expression uh, that a person can really can be taken by surprise and be controlled by the libidinous uh, programming that their ego and their ex, their expe expectations hopes and dreams and whatever would uh, would bring for them to experience and so what I'm going to suggest is that you stay away from certain levels of entertainment that are of a quality that is damaging another human being. So I, I would suggest you stay away from pornographic images or pornographic stories or, you know, or, or levels of, uh, of uh, sexual-based uh, libidinous uh, entertainment that, uh, that can really begin to, to steer you into areas that are extremely unpleasant. Uh, the ego will use the passions, the libidinous passions of a person and try to construct, uh, you know, different control mechanisms and different uh, expressions of desire and want and need and all of these things 
uh, you know, for the Kundalini person to 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 really be blown away by. And because the libido can be so amazingly um, stimulated, aroused by the just alone by the Kundalini even being there uh, to to start stacking. Uh, um, anticipatory phenomena, you know, based upon the ego's wants and needs, can really begin to steer a person down a path that is going to be very difficult to to detangle themselves from. But not impossible, but, but difficult. And uh, part of my job here as a teacher is to kind of steer people away from the obvious areas of polluting their bodies as as I can. And one of those ways of polluting the body is through the uh, degradation of the uh, of your fellow human being, or the or the degradation of a sacred act that allows us to even have human beings, uh, or even you know the the the, the self degradation that that people can inflict upon themselves through through different uh, angles of of libidinous interest. Uh, so I, I want you to really be aware of that. Now, if you're doing something of a uh, of that quality, that is that is supporting your kundalini, well, then fine. You know, tantra is all about that. You know, use the libido as a as a source of power in order to to really help you connect in a deeper way with your kundalini. But don't use it as a way of expressing joy through. Hurt, hurting another person, or, 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 or having yourself hurt or being hurt, uh, certainly not in in any kind of a permanent way, but but also not in a in a in a way that is uh, accompanied with self stimulation and things of that nature. So really, step outside uh, the pornographic model that we have, uh, certainly here in the West and Asia. Step way outside of, of that. Step away from that expression. Of a, of a of a of contributing the ego into the uh, the kundalini heightened uh, uh, libidinous response in in the person. Okay, so certainly stay away from that if you can. Uh, with regards to uh, the activities uh, that that you'll be. Oh, okay, so. Because you're through, you're, you're going through a transformation, and because that transformation uh, can be physically tactile, uh, you're going to want to have a heads up about that this is actually real. That this, you're going to feel fingers on your body. You're going to feel uh, yourself maybe uh, slapped on the back, or you're going to feel like you know, little insects or ants or electric snakes are running through your scalp and all of this stuff. Don't worry about any of that. It's all normal. It's all normal. Do not go into fear over that. You're going to have plenty of opportunities to, to, to challenge your fear as well. So while we're talking about fear a little bit, I'd like to just throw in some of the dietary uh, uh, admonitions, and that is to take all caffeine out of your diet, all caffeine out of the diet of a kundalini awakening person that caffeine will have uh, you know it will it will cause a hyper excretion of adrenaline into the bloodstream which causes a fight or flee response and the body doesn't have anything to fight or flee at the moment so that creates one and all of a sudden you know you're being chased by demons or some sort of a thing going on and and uh you know you, you, your day might be full enough without, you know, having it, uh, having yourself chased by demons while you're on your lunch break or <laughs> while, you're <laughs> while you're waiting for the bathroom or something. You don't need to be chased by demons, even though, you know, that's a real event. Uh, you don't need to to encourage the scary things, and and so you don't, you certainly don't want to drink a Pepsi that has, you know. Uh, uh, artificial sugars and and uh, caffeine, you know, in it, and then go see a, a a fright night scary movie. That's the last thing you want to do. 
You know, I mean, you can become the star of that movie in your own household if you want. <laughs> you know, the pea soup, the whole bit. So, uh, so you can uh, you can scare yourself silly if that's what your intention is. But the thing is, is with Kundalini, it doesn't go away. You don't get to walk out of the theater. You are the theater. You are the theater. Okay, so if you know if, you, if you're asking me, and even though I know nobody's called in, and so nobody's asking me, but I'll just go ahead and say it anyway. Uh, do your best. Do your best to accept the changes and the phenomena that's occurring. Stay hydrated. Eat watermelon as much as you can. Follow the the dietary guidelines that you see in the safeties. The kundalini will cause you to want to eat only vegetables and rice. And, you know, you'll eat like a rabbit. You'll be a rabbit kundalini person. And then the very next month, it, it will change you into a carnivore and you'll only be allowed to eat meat. Don't buy in to any of this, you know, five five body program that, oh, you must be vegetarian or you're not spiritual. Uh, if you're not vegetarian, then you're not spiritual. And that just doesn't cut it with the Kundalini. The Kundalini, basically, the Kundalini sees all life on this planet as being vegetarian. All life on this planet as being vegetable, vegetarian. Because as the, as the solar rays come down, you know, the, the, the herbivores eat it. And the carnivores basically eat the same thing packaged in a different way. You know, the, the proteins are more compact, and yet these proteins are made from plants. Okay? And don't think that plants don't have feelings. Plants most certainly do have feelings, and they have wisdom. And, and just because you're killing a plant doesn't mean that the death is any less precious than if you were to kill a a horse or a turkey or a chicken or something like that. Life is precious to all life. And so, you know, if you're being guided to eat meat, realize that the kundalini, which is, which is you know, part of the force that created all life on this world, kundalini has determined that you need to eat this meat. So, you're, you, you know, you just be thankful to the animal that gave that ultimate sacrifice, and you're grateful, and you eat that food. If you resist it, you might get sick. You know, lots of times we'll decide that we're a certain way and there's no way I'm going to change. And then the first thing the Kundalini does is it comes in and says, oh, wow, it looks like you're a vegetarian for 17 years. Well, here, we're going to change you into a a uh, carnivore. Have a nice day. And the Kundalini fully expects you to accept that change. But you'll know. You'll know because you'll feel the hunger pains for meat that... that uh, that you know, last week you would have had for just vegetables. You'll feel that for meat, and so what I'm giving you is a heads up here to follow that impulse. Start it out if you've been a vegetarian a long time. Start it out light. Go with fish or chicken or something like that, or maybe a, a, a fried katie dids. You know, you can you can fry up those katie dids too. Katie did uh, for those of you that don't live in the U.S. Katie did is kind of like a grasshopper that you can eat. Okay, uh, so for any questions about your Kundalini Awakening experience, call in the United States, 347-934-0026. Santara, or Santata, as you have it there. Is anybody in the chat room? <laughs> I don't have access to the chat room, Kristen, because unfortunately I have my iPad. So it's not working for me. So I have no idea. Oh, okay. Well, if yeah, there's anybody, so people, well, since so we didn't we didn't turn on the chat room, so I guess it's not working then. Okay. Uh, for those of you who are used to listen into the chat room and it's not on today, my apologies. We're trying out the Skype thing, and it seems to be working pretty well. You know, I 
I, I don't yeah, have any from complaints. Here, Susan, you sound, no, from here you sound fine. We haven't had any calls. I'm assuming one of the regular listeners would have phoned in if there was a problem. Um, and we always okay. have a few regular listeners live. So let's assume it's going well. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, um, one thing I haven't discussed too much is music in the Kundalini. In the, there's very, very, very specific uh, teachings around music. Some of you, during your Kundalini experience, will hear the celestial music. This is music that is not of this world. Although the frequencies and the sounds, you know, when you hear the horns or you hear the voices... They sound human, and they sound like you know, you know, like a, this amazing orchestra, symphony, but it is not of this world, and uh, it is real. It is a real thing, and you are really hearing it. But what you're really hearing is an audio phenomena of Kundalini. You will be drawn to certain types of music. Uh, Music that you may not have had an interest in before. Um, uh, Sanskrit chanting, you may be drawn to that. I was certainly drawn to that. And, but also because because I was raised non-religious in the West, you know, I, I take my music cues from all different kinds, from opera to country western to rock and roll to jazz to classical uh, to tribal you know, to chanting. I mean, you know, you take your music cues from from all over. And the Kundalini actually would take me into musical areas uh, that were very, very, very devotional. Uh, the chanting of nuns in a chapel or the Gregorian chants or, you know, things of that nature. And I, I don't want you to resist that. All of a sudden, out of the blue, you'll just want to listen to somebody chanting and in a Gregorian type of, of way or a Sanskrit type of way. And, and I'm going to suggest that you go with that. And if you can, start chanting or singing along. The Kundalini is telling you that the frequencies and the combinations of frequencies that are being uh, played in that music are an important part of its transformation of you. And so it will want you to start listening to that kind of music. That happened to me quite a bit, you know. I would, uh, I found Tchaikovsky to be extremely Kundalini uh, appropriate. Tchaikovsky, um, uh, you know, like the, uh, the Swan Lake series or the uh, Appalachian Springtime or things of that nature. But also uh, music from uh, 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 the, the Christian. Uh, uh, expression as it's practiced here in the states you know like like spiritual music of a of a christian scenario or or spiritual music of a native american uh, uh origin or or uh, uh you know from the continent of india you know with their different uh, the sanskrit and the flutes and things of that nature so i would i would encourage you to expand expand your musical tastes along the lines that your kundalini wants it to go into. That your kundalini wants it to go into. Okay, that's the caveat. You, this isn't, I'm not giving your ego permission to just, you know, race through the radio dial looking for different pieces of music. What I am suggesting is that as the kundalini makes its presence more and more obvious to you, that you allow that force within yourself to choose music for you. To choose the music for you. Uh, you know, it could be anything from Steve Winwood's Back in the High Life Again to, to uh, you know, Sonny and Cher to, to Tchaikovsky to Beethoven to Chopin. I mean, you know, all of the different... Uh, uh, expressions of music the Kundalini will choose from in order to give you a specific teaching. And along that line, as I mentioned before, the quality of Kundalini in my voice is being sent out as a seed force of energy for those who are 
wanting to activate the kundalini, but also for those who already have it and may be struggling. May be struggling. Okay. Feel the energy in my voice. Open yourself to that energy. Let it join with your energy. And let yourself be lifted. Let yourself be lifted into, you know, to another layer of, uh, of evolutionary consciousness. Another gift of the divine within you, you know, as there's so many gifts that come. It may seem like they come and go, but they, they come, they're processed, they're stored. And whether or not they're, they're expressive to you at the drop of the hat that your ego would expect it to be, it doesn't mean they're gone. It just means they're stored. And the kundalini will decide when that, when that certain trade or when that certain skill is going to be exercised. Okay? So take all of this. Take all of this in. Let this settle with you. See how you feel. If you feel that the information I'm giving to you is worthwhile to you, then then look look to making some life changes. I'm suggesting life changes, folks. You listen to all of the conversations that are given free here. Uh, you listen to them all and you take from them. Kundalini isn't the kind of energy that runs out of power. It is omnipresent in its power. It is There is never a lack of power with Kundalini. You always have power. Because it is independent of, of, the, of the body electric. It is its own frequency of power that melds with the body electric. Okay, It's an unlimited source that's fixating itself upon a a uh, a limited source. So it's the the unlimited divinity uh, causing change upon the fixed uh, flesh of the physical reality. If you find this information is helpful to you, well then practice this information. Practice it. If you know other people that might be going through kundalini, they're having a hard time with it, let them listen to these conversations. If you feel like donating, donating. So donate to, at the uh, the address that uh, that uh, Amelia Centaur gave you, Ascension hyphen kundalini at blogspot uh, at blogspot dot blog or I think that's how it goes. But if you just go Ascension Kundalini blog spot, then it'll take you right there, and you can see the donate button. Uh, I want to thank everybody for listening. I'm going to, I'm about ready to wrap this up. I'm going to give you one last microsecond to call in. The number is one three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. So for those of you that are from the three one three area code and are just listening, thank you. For listening, Santara and family, thank you for putting this together. You're very welcome. I'm going to give that address again, the full address, Prism. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And thank you, Prism, for the chat tank. Um, I enjoyed it, and I was certainly sitting in the presence of truth. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Amelia Centaur, and thank your whole family. Um, yeah, so uh, once again, I apologize for last week and the week before. Uh looks like this Skype, the Skype option is going to work, so I will continue using the Skype option. Um, for those of you uh, uh, who don't know, I'll be back uh, next Wednesday, 3 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email them to Santara or to me. My, my email is K as in Kundalini, so K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com. That's K-Fire-For-All at yahoo.com. You can email me directly as well. Uh, thank you all for listening, and I hope to speak with you next week. Bye-bye.